okay? This video is on the laws of indices or powers. Uh, there are a couple of laws here that are basic, uh, such as multiplication law, the division law, a power to a power, some negative powers, and to the power of zero. There's also one for fractions, but I'll try and deal with as many of them as I can in a basic way. So then you can try some examples, and I'll go through some here on the pages. Firstly, though, we should talk about this. Uh, two numbers in here, say x and y, brackets to all, all to be squared. That squared comes in and affects the first term and the second term. So x, y, all to be squared would be x squared, y squared. Similarly, like if you had maybe a, b, all to be squared, that would be a squared, b squared, or maybe a, b, all to the power of 5 would be a to the 5, b to the 5. So this is an important thing to remember. Also, in a fraction, x over y, all squared, would be, you can square comes in and affects the top and the bottom. That's x squared over y squared. Similarly, a over b, all to be cubed, would go to a cubed over b cubed. This is something that's important to remember. It'll make some of your problems a bit more easier. Okay, now first off, we'll deal with the division, the most basic. So what if we had something like this? So say we had something easy like 3 to the power of 5 over 3 to the power of 2. What would that simplify to? Well, just remember that 3 to the power of 5 is 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3. 5 threes all over 3 multiplied by 3. 2 threes. You could then start cancelling off a 3 with a 3 and another 3 with a 3. That would just leave you with 3 on the top, so you'd have 3 to the power of 3 left. Now, you're not always going to get nice numbers like that, so often what you're going to see are problems that look like this. x maybe to the power of 6 over x to the power of 4. What would that simplify to? So again, just remember that that's 6 x's across the top. x times x times x times x times x x and all over x. So we can start cancelling off. So we have 6 across the top, 4 across the bottom. That leaves us with just 2 on the top. Now when we're left with just 2 on the top, that just gives us x to the power of 2, or x squared. They're not always going to be a bigger number on the top. You could also get something like this. What about y to the power of, we'll say, 3 over y to the power of 4. So again, just to see what that looks like, that's y times y times y all over y. Something like this. We now start cancelling and we see we're left with 1 on the bottom. Being left 1 on the bottom, we have an answer of 1 over y. So we're left with just 1 y on the bottom, but there's always something on top. It's in the 1. Okay? So that's a basic division, that's a basic introduction to the first one. Then, for negative powers, what would we have? Well, for negative indices, we could look at something like this. Say we just had 1 over y, and we want to write that as something, we want to bring this to the top. Well, you can actually do this, y can come up and become y to the power of minus 1. Okay? Similarly, if I had 1 over y squared, y squared can come up, but it changes the power of the sign to minus 2. Works for any uh, different variable on the bottom, and there's a couple of different ways we can use it. So I need you to remember that. You bring this, you bring that up, you change the sign. It doesn't always go negative. I could have something like this. 1 over x to the minus 3. Well, when I bring this up, it becomes x to the plus 3. Similarly, if I already had maybe uh, an a on top and I put, say, b to the power of 2 on the bottom, and I want to write it all in the one line, this can come up and becomes a, and now b goes beside it and goes to the power of minus 2, changes the sign. So remember, the sign has just been changed. It might look like it's always going negative, but look here, when it was already negative, it came up and became a positive. This type of trick can be used to solve these type of equations. If we look at this one here, x to the 6 over x to the 4. We can bring up x to the 4 and we get 
x to the minus 4. Yeah, and we can actually just add these two powers. That's the next rule, but 6 minus 4 is 2. And you can see that we get the same answer as what we got up here. So negative powers. Remember, you bring the, the number with the exponent above the line, you change the sign of the power. Now, multiplication, we just touched on there. So what about this? Well, if I have 2 to the power 3 multiplied by 2 to the power 3, and you will sometimes see a dot for multiplication. Because we use x as a variable sometimes, we don't always use it as a multiplication symbol. But here, 2 to the power 3 and 2 to the power 3, you add the powers here, right? So this tells you to add the powers. So that's your rule for multiplication, for add the powers. Now, a couple things to remember. The 2 needs to be the same. The base of the power needs to be the same in both for this to happen. I have a 2 here and a 2 here, that's okay. If it was 2 to the power of 3 multiplied by 3 to the power of 3, I couldn't do anything then. I'd have to leave it as it is. But because the base are the same, we can add the powers. So 2 to the power of 3 times 2 to the power of 3 is 2 to the power of 6. But you can think of it this way as well. 2 to the power of 3 is 2 by 2 by 2 and another 2 to the power of 3 is 2 by 2 by 2 so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 6 2's, same answer Okay. similarly if I had this a to the power of 5 times a to the power of 2 same base of a so I can add these powers so I get a to the power of 7 remember I have 5 a's and I have 2 a's so that's 7 a's so for multiplication we say add the powers but just be careful maybe if I had something like this 3 to the power of 2 times 2 to the power of 3. What could I do here? Well, I can't add the powers or simplify this. I just have to leave it as it is. Why? Because the 3 and the 2, the big numbers in the base, are not the same. So they'd have to be the same, like the two twos are here. Now, what about a power to a power? Well, let's look at a similar example. What about 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 3? Here, we multiply the powers and often we call powers exponents as well so you say multiply the exponents or indices in this is the chapter is called but really we all know them as powers so here we multiply these so 3 times 3 is 9 that gives us 2 to the power of 9 but just to see what's going on here what we have is 2 to the power of 3 3 times essentially 2 to the power of 3 times 2 to the power of 3 times 2 to the power of 3. If we expand it like this, it now becomes a multiplication problem where we can add the powers. And just to remind us what's happening, that's 3 2's, that's 3 2's, and that's 3 2's. So you can see here we have 9 2's. Similarly, when we're talking about variables, and I say something like a to the power of 2 to the power of 4, we know we need to multiply these powers. That's going to be 2 times 4, which is 8, a to the power of 8. Or similarly, we have 4 of these a squared, so we'd have 2 a's, 2 a's, 2 a's, and 2 a's, giving us 8 a's. That's a power to a power. Okay? Now, just on the multiplication one, just to remind you very quickly, because I probably should have dealt with that there, is in the last question, I showed you something like this, x to the power of 6 over x to the power of 4. We, we want to bring this above the line. Remember, the power changes to a negative. Now we have x to the power of 6 times x to the power of minus 4. Now we're back to a multiplication problem because we've changed the look of this. So 6 minus 4 is 2. That's x to the power of 2. So we've changed this division problem to a multiplication problem, which is a little bit easier maybe to solve. So we have multiplication and pair to pair. Two that always get mixed up. People either add or multiply and don't know which one to do. What's the best thing to do? Actually expand it out if you're unsure like this. See that I have 3 2s and 3 2s giving me 6. Here I have 3 2 cubes or 3 2's each time, 2 to the power of 9, to the power of 0. So something you're going to have to remember here is anything to the power of 0 equals just 1. So it might seem strange if it's your first time seeing that, but x to the power of 0, regardless of what x is, equals to 1.
y to the power of 0 equals to 1. x times y to the power of 0 equals to 1. Doesn't matter what I do. Even something crazy like pi to the power of 0. That's equal to 1. The sine of x all to the power of 0 equals to 1. I could do this all day. There's, a nice, there's some nice proofs online why that works. I would not concern yourselves with those. But just know that anything to the power of 0 equals to 1. And let's maybe look at a problem where we can manipulate something into that. So what about x squared over x squared? Now some of you will notice that something over itself is always equal to 1. But if we change this using the division rule, we can say that's x squared. Bring up this guy. Times x to the minus 2. Now it's a multiplication problem. So 2 minus 2 is 0. And of course x to the power of 0 equals to 1. So if you like, that proves it to you. But anything to the power of 0 is always equal to 1. Remember this. And then on to the last one, fractional powers. So what do fractional powers mean? Well, for you it's mostly going to be square roots. So square root of x can be changed to x to the power of a half. So just remember that the square root goes to the half exponent. Okay, so what about the square root of a, a, same thing, a to the power of a half. What about something we bring a couple together here? From the very first page I told you that xy squared was equal to x squared y squared. Yeah? So what about this square root of xy? Well, the first change is going to be xy to the power of a half. And then we see that that's x to the power of a half times y to the power of a half, because the power comes into both, just like this rule here. So essentially, the square root of xy is the square root of x times the square root of y, because we see that when we do all these changes, we get x to the power of a half times y to the power of a half. And of course, each of these are square roots. So that's good to mention that if you do see something like this, what about 9 to the power of a half? You might think you need your calculator for that, but you don't, because the half power exponent is a, dis a square root in disguise. So that changes to the square root of 9, and we all know square root of 9 is equal to 3. One more thing just to add to that is this. What if I had something like this? Square root of x cubed. So, slightly more difficult example. With a small few changes, I can see that that's x cubed to the power of a half. Now, this is a power to a power, so what do I do? Well, hopefully you remember that a power to a power, you multiply. What's 3 times a half? 3 times a half is 3 halves. So, that changes to x to the power of... 3 over 2. So x to the power of 3 over 2 is essentially the square root of x cubed. If you get really good at this, you can start working those backwards. Just one example to finish up as. I have some examples here in a book beside me. Maybe I might have a look and see what they might give us. So it says to simplify something like this. So 16 to the power of minus a half. What can we do here? So without using a calculator, we wanted to deal with this. Now, it's very hard to deal with negative square roots, but just like we, bought, we brought roots above the line and changed the sign, we can also bring them below the line. So this actually, to get this into a regular positive power, we can say that's 1 over 16 to the power of a half. Okay? Now remember, if I was given this and I wanted to bring it up, I'd change the sign to minus a half, but that's what I was given, so I knew I brought it under the line. Okay? Power of a half, we now know that's a square root. Square root of 16, 4. So actually, 16 to the power of minus a half, you've put that into your calculator, you'll get a quarter. And there's a couple of different ones. What about a, maybe this one here? 2 over 3 to the power of a minus 2. Well, we know from the very first page when x over y was all to the power of 2, we got x squared over y squared. So now we'll bring the minus 2 into each, and we'll get 2 to the power of minus 2 over 3 to the power of minus 2. We don't want these powers negative, we want to do it in our head. So this one would have to come above the line, 
and this one would have to come below the line. So when 3 to the power of minus 2 comes up, it becomes 3 squared. When 2 to the power of minus 2 goes down, it becomes 2 squared. That changes to 9, because 3 squared is 9, over 2 squared, which is 4. There's loads more. I will do another video on tougher examples, but for now, just remember that the basic rules and go back through the video. Thank you.